Come on, baby, now. Curve sketching, curve sketching. Come on, come on, come on, come on, baby, now. Come on and sketch it with me. Sketch it with me. The graph would look so good. Look so good. The graph would look so fine. Look so fine. Come on and sketch a little closer now. Oh, let me know that you're mine. Know you're mine. Curve sketching. That's what we're doing today. All right, so we now have all the tools that we need to sketch the graph of pretty much any function. So let me give you a step-by-step -step method for sketching the graph of a function, and then I'll work through an example. First thing you want to do is extract information from the function itself. So the domain of the function is certainly part of its definition, but then you can also find its intercepts. The y-intercepts are the function value at x equals to 0, and the x-intercepts, so the points where the function is 0, you can find the regions where the function is positive or negative. You can ask whether the function has some sort of symmetry, so whether it is even or odd, uh, whether it is periodic. And you can find the asymptotes of the function, so the vertical asymptotes and the horizontal asymptotes that we've studied already. And also perhaps slant asymptotes, so we will study those in class. Okay, the next step is to extract information from the first derivative f prime. So you'll want to find the intervals where the function increases and decreases by finding the intervals where the first derivative is positive or negative. And then you want to find the local max and min by finding the critical points of the function and then determining whether they're local max and min using the first derivative test. And finally, you want to extract information from the second derivative, so that will tell us about concavity of the function. So you'll find the intervals where the second derivative is positive or negative. And also you want to find inflection points, which are uh, points where concavity changes. And finally, the last step, which is not on my slide, is to put all of that together and sketch a graph of the function. So you want to sketch a graph as precise as possible and include on the graph uh, basically all the asymptotes, all the inflection points, the local max, the local min, all of that you want to include uh, the information on the graph. All right, so let me now work through an example step by step. So I want to sketch the graph of the function x squared plus 1 over x. So first I'm going to extract information from the function itself. So what is the domain of the function? Well, the function is defined for all real numbers except at x equals to 0. Okay, and then I can find the intercepts of the function. First, there's no y-intercepts because the function is not defined at x equals to 0. And for the x, x intercepts, so I want to find the x values such that f of x is 0, so I want to solve 0 is equal to x squared plus 1 over x which is the same as solving x squared is equal to minus 1 over x, or x cubed is equal to minus 1, which has a unique solution given by x equals to minus 1. So we know that the function will go through the point minus 1, 0, and that's the only place where it will cross the x-axis. Now I could also ask about the interval where the function is positive or negative. So I can construct a little table here for my function. So there's three different regions here. There's x less than minus 1, at x equals to minus 1, we've just calculated that the function is 0. Then there's, minus, there's between minus 1 and 0, so at x equals to 0, that's a special point because the function is undefined. right? So the function could change sign at this point. So we have to consider the two regions on both sides separately. And then x greater than 0 is the other region. Now looking back at the function, well first if x is less than minus 1, we see that the first term will dominate over the second one, but it will be positive. The function is positive. If x is between 0 and minus 1, the second term will dominate, but it's negative. The function is negative, and if x is positive, everything is positive. So now I could shade some regions in my graph. So if x is less than minus 1, I know that the function will be positive, so I'll shade the negative region to show that the function cannot be here. Similarly, between minus 1 and 0, the function will be negative, so I can shade the positive region. And for x greater than 0, the function is positive, so I can shade the negative region. So what else can I extract from the function itself? Well, I can ask about symmetry of the function, but here the function is not uh, even, nor odd, nor periodic, so there's no particular symmetry for that function. And finally, I can ask about asymptotes. So here we're going to start with vertical asymptotes and study horizontal asymptotes as well. And slant asymptotes is another possibility that we will study in class. So remember that vertical asymptotes are points where uh, the limit of the function on either side of that uh, point 
will either go to plus or minus infinity. Now, if I look at the domain here, there's a, only one point where this, this could happen, which is zero. So I can calculate the limit on both sides of this point. So as x goes to zero plus, so if I approach from the positive side, the limit of my function here will be just the limit as zero plus of x squared plus one over x. Well, the first term is just zero, but the limit of the second term will go to one over something very, very small, but positive, which gives me plus infinity. And similarly, the limit as x goes to zero minus of my functions, so in that case, the second term will go to one over something very small, but negative. So in this case, it will be minus infinity. So from this, you conclude that the vertical line x equals to zero is a vertical asymptote of the function. So what we do in this case is we just write a dotted line for the vertical asymptote. And in fact, we know more than that. So I'm going to sketch the graph of the function in red. So we know that if we approach from the left side, the function goes to infinity. So we know it will approach the vertical asymptote on the negative side. And if we approach on the right side, it goes to plus infinity. So it will approach on the positive side. But in fact, we already knew that just looking at the regions of positivity for the function. All right, now we could ask about horizontal asymptotes. So what are those? These are about the behavior of the function as x goes to plus or minus infinity. Now, if you look at the limit as x goes to infinity of our function, so this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared plus 1 over x. 1 over x goes to 0, but x squared just becomes bigger and bigger. So the limit actually goes to plus infinity. And if you go to minus infinity, well, the same thing happens. 1 over x goes to 0, but x squared becomes bigger and bigger and positive because it's a square. So this is also infinite which means that there is no horizontal asymptote because the function just keeps growing as x goes to plus or minus infinity. All right, so what about the first derivative? So this is steps e and f in my step-by-step -step method, which are about finding the intervals of increase and decrease of the function and the local min and max. So recall that the function is x squared plus 1 over x. So I can calculate the first derivative. I get 2x minus 1 over x squared, and if I put everything on the common denominator, I'll get 2x cubed minus 1 times 1 over x squared. Now, what are the critical points? Well, first, critical numbers. Well, x equals to 0 is not a critical number because it's not part of the domain of the function. But there is a critical number, which is at the 0 of f prime. So this will be where 2x cubed minus 1 is equal to 0, which will be at x is equal to cube root of 1 over which is something like 0 0.8, I think. All right, that's good. Now we need to find whether this is a local min or max, and we want to find the intervals where the function is increasing or decreasing. So I'm just going to construct a table, as we've done before, for f prime and what it implies for f. So I have three different regions, x less than 0. I always have to include x equals to 0 here because uh, the function is undefined. So I'm going to write d and e here just to say a function is not defined because this is not part of the domain. And then I have x between 0 and cube root of 1 over 2. I have x at the cube root, which I've just calculated the first derivative is 0 at this point, then x greater than this point. All right, now I need to find whether the first derivative is positive or negative over these intervals. So uh, first, I'll take the case where x is negative. So if you look at the first derivative, the, the factor 1 over x squared is always positive, so I don't care about it. But the other factor here in this case, if x is negative, will be negative. So the derivative is negative. The function is decreasing. If x is between 0 and the cube root of 1 over 2, this is still negative. So the derivative is still negative, and the function is still decreasing. But if x becomes greater than the cube root of 1 over 2, this becomes positive which means that the function is now increasing, and then by the first derivative test, I see that this is going to be a local min of the function. And in fact, I could calculate what the min is, just to have an idea of where to put it on the graph. So I want to calculate the value of the function at cube root of 1 over 2. And if you substitute back, you'll get cube root of 1 over 4 plus cube root of 2, which I think is approximately something like 1.9. All right, so if I go back to the graph, so what do I know about the function now? 
Well, I know that for any x negative, the function will be decreasing, so it'll go like something like that. I'm not going to sketch it right away because I want to know more about concavity. And I also know that there's going to be a local min, which will be somewhere like here, which was at minus, uh, sorry, not minus, plus cube root of 1 over 2, and then cube root of 1 over 4 plus cube root of 2. So this will be local min, so it will go like this because I know it's also decreasing on the left side and increasing on the right side here. So I could indicate explicitly here that this is a local min. And finally, I can study the second order derivative. So this is steps g and h in my uh, method, uh, which is about concavity of the function and inflection points. So I calculate the second order derivative. I get 2 plus 2 over x cubed, which is the same as 2 over x cubed times x cubed plus 1. And now I want to find the zeros of that function because these will uh, separate the different regions of positivity for f double prime. So there's single zero at this uh, of this function here which is at x cubed plus 1 equals to 0 whose unique solution is x equals to minus 1. All right, so I can construct my table for f double prime to study concavity of the function. There's three different regions. Uh, there's x less than minus 1. At x equals to minus 1 we've just show that the second order derivative is 0. Then there's x between minus 1 and 0. We always have to place x equals to 0 here because this is not in the domain of the function. And then x greater than 0. And now we look at the sign of f double prime for each of these regions. So if x is less than minus 1, well, 2 over x cubed will be negative, and x cubed plus 1 will also be negative. So negative times negative that becomes positive, which makes us happy, so concavity will be concave up. If x is between 0 and minus 1, the first factor, 2 over x cubed, is still negative, but the second one becomes positive. So this is negative, unhappy, concave down. That also tells us that this is an inflection point, because concavity is changing there. And finally, if x is positive, the whole thing is positive, so this is plus, so we're happy, it's concave up. Now, of course, x equals to 0 is not an inflection point because the function is undefined there. It's not in the domain. In fact, there's a vertical asymptote in there. All right, so now we can combine all of that to finish the graph of the function. So we know here that it's decreasing, but we also know that it's concave up all the way to minus 1 and then concave down for the second part. As for here, so let me just erase that a little bit, draw it better. So we know that for all positive x is concave up, and we found that there's a local min here, so it will look like something like that. And finally, I should indicate the inflection point, which is here. There's only one inflection point, which is at the point minus 1, 0. And that would be the final sketch of the graph. Woohoo! We made it!